Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, it is a special edition of Taking Stock at what might be a pivotal moment for all of us when it comes to our finances and some big financial decisions. We're talking to Wall Street icon Howard Marks about what he calls a sea change in the foundation of a lot of those decisions. And as the Bank of Canada considers another rate hike and borrowing gets more expensive, plus as prices remain high for a lot of things and volatile for things like stocks and houses. My conversation with Howard Marks is coming up. But first, a look at where we've been when it comes to interest rates and what that's meant for borrowing by the numbers. We all know rates have gone up recently. The current four and a quarter percent is the highest level since 2008. But to put that into context, over the long term, rates declined for much of the past 40 years since hitting a high water mark in the 1980s, settling in at an average of 4% for the 10 years leading up to the credit crisis in 2008. The emergency action taken by central banks sent rates down to zero. And while the Bank of Canada managed to raise ours slightly in the years after, the pandemic sent them down again. Borrowing costs over the long term also plummeted, as you would expect. So the safest investments like a government bond returned very little. That helped send stock markets and other prices like houses higher, making those riskier bets more appealing or even necessary to generate adequate returns. Now, one of the big questions will be, where do we go from here? Much of that may be determined by inflation, which would need to settle back into a 2% range and stay there. But remember, when inflation last stayed at 2%, bank rates averaged 4%. Which brings us to the question, is the era of ultra-low borrowing behind us? When it comes to observations about market trends, our guest today stands out. Even other top investors wait to hear what Howard Marks has to say about what's going on. So when it comes to this important question about whether the era of low rates is behind us, there's no one better to ask. And in a recent edition of his widely read memo, Marks addressed this issue. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. You talk about a sea change and that in your career there have been three that you would identify. This is the third and it I, is this kind of pivot moment is how I would put it. What's the sea change you're talking about? The, the sea change is basically a change from the uh, extremely low interest rate climate of the last 40, 14 years, I guess, for that, and uh, the climate of declining interest rates of the last 40 years. Uh, you know, ever since the Fed uh, stepped in to rescue the world in the global financial crisis, they've kept interest rates low. That's made it very easy to get money. It's made it easy to make to make money. Uh, I just think that uh, conditions are going to be somewhat different in the years ahead. The, and this is important because you you talk about the two distinctions, and there it's key to say. Yes, we went very low on interest rates in a kind of an emergency mode right. after the great credit crisis, and we never really got back to normal. But they were declining ever since the last time we had a big inflation scare. Uh, and that declining, in some ways, would you not agree, kind of changed the mindset even more? Because you, when you expect things to keep going down, it changes the way you think about how you're going to price things and the risk you're taking. Well, it, it, it changed the mindset. It also created very, very... Uh... Uh, salutary conditions. You know, in uh, 1980, I had a loan outstanding from the bank, and I got a slip from the bank saying the rate on your loan is now 22 and a quarter. 40 years later, I was able to borrow money at two and a quarter. So we have a decline of interest rates of 20 percentage points mm -hmm. steadily over that period. And uh, declining interest rates are very good for the economy. They stimulate it. They're very good for business. They make it easier to, to make money. They make it, they reduce the cost, the interest cost to businesses. They make it great for borrowers. They make it great for asset owners because assets become worth, an asset with a given uh, uh, cash flow becomes more valuable when, when competing things like bonds decline in interest. So salutary across the board. And of course, we all did what we were supposed to do. Businesses did what they were supposed to do. Consumers, right. we borrowed more. We, yes. Money became easy to get, and so we, we took as much of it as we possibly could. Right. And to your point, we did well with that. The yes. economy did well. Business, the stock market, you can argue, one of the reasons it's done so well, uh, certainly in the last 10 years, right. is because of that. Sure. So when we talk about it shifting, do we now say that's all going to disappear? It's, it's 
I'm not saying it's going to reverse. I'm not saying that interest rates are, are going to go up rapidly or that they will end up being high. But the period of ultra low interest rates, as you say, the Fed put rates at zero, at, I think it was the end of 08 to solve the global financial crisis, kept it there for seven years. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was an emergency, surely the emergency didn't last seven years. And I think they overstayed in low rates. I don't think we're going back there for a variety of reasons. Uh, and certainly with rates uh, in the three, four range, you can't think they're going down another 20. There's no room for such a decline. So the, the period of declining interest rates, which, asks, which was a, a tailwind or an escalator for investors over that period of time, I think that's essentially over. And, and I want to ask you, and I know you don't like to be asked, you know, what's the Bank of Canada going to do at the next meeting? Mm. Uh, because your, your point is, what are you going to do differently if right. you know the answer to that? But when it's these long-term kind of foundational changes, it is relevant to say, okay, is this going to have to change how we think about how much, how much bonds go in our portfolio? Sure. Or sure. is our house going to be as valuable as we thought it would? Is it going to change the way we actually think about the things we own or want to own? Sure. Well, uh, if you, it, it's very important to note that government policies do not, governments don't make anything. The government does not contribute to GDP directly. They don't have a product or a service that they provide for a fee. What they do is they take resources from some people and they give them to other people. Right. They make choices. And uh, over this period of time, to support the economy, they made the choice of, of uh, penalizing savers and lenders and subsidizing uh, borrowers and asset owners who benefited from the low rates. Uh, I think that the, in retrospect, I would think that the people who run the Fed now realize that rates were too low for too long, uh, too stimulative. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you use the term emergency. Uh, it, it, a, an interest rate cut from the Fed is kind of like adrenaline. It mm -hmm. stimulates the economy. Adrenaline is used with people who have heart attacks. It, it, it brings them out of it. But I, that doesn't mean you should take a shot of adrenaline every morning. Right. And I think a steady multi-year dose of emergency rates is too long. And it set the scene in some ways for the inflation that the world has been experiencing in the last year or so. And I think now there's a sentiment that we can't run a deficit as big as we want, print as much money as we want, issue as much debt as we want, and not have some negative side effects. Because we've all become accustomed to this, this adrenaline that Alan Greenspan, former Federal Reserve right. Chair, referred famously to as the punch bowl, right. he was taking it away briefly yes. in the late 90s. Yes. It, they gave it back really quickly, and we've all been drinking it since. Mm. If you, when you take the punch bowl away, do we all wind up with a hangover? Will stocks be weaker for the foreseeable future? Will capital be harder to get for businesses? I'm not saying a doomsday yeah. scenario, yeah. but will there be a period where growth looks different? I, I describe the last 15 years as, a, as an easy period. It was easy for corporate managements because they were operating in a very positive economic environment. There was no substantial recession mm -hmm. uh, once you get past the global financial crisis. Uh, as you say, they could get money easily and cheaply um, in, in, in investing paid off, investing using borrowed money paid off doubly. Uh, I just think that those things are going to be a little less true. And by the way, in this period, there were relatively few defaults and bankruptcies. It was hard to, to go default or go bankrupt in, in a period that was so uh, sanguine. Uh, so I just think a little less of, of the ease, uh, a little more discomfort, you know, but I think that I think that's a good thing. I wrote in one of my memos during the crisis that uh, fear of bankruptcy is to capitalism as fear of hell is to Catholicism. Uh, you know, when, 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 when people who participate in the economy uh, have a healthy respect for the possibility of default and bankruptcy, they'll, they'll act in, in, uh, in prudent ways. But you mentioned Alan Greenspan. There developed something called a belief in something called the Greenspan put that if the economy ran into trouble, he would just squirt in a little more liquidity and it would come back. Um, 
that's a bad expectation because that's, that leads to the belief that the government will bail you out even if you make imprudent decisions. Uh, and that, of course, tends to encourage imprudence. Uh, I, th I think it's healthier what we're going into. And by the way, what we're going into is not some period of difficulty. It's normal. <laughs> and people, people say now maybe, oh, why don't we, I'd like to go back to normal like two years ago. That wasn't normal. That was this easy money era. Normal is healthier. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will find out what Howard Marks thinks about some of the most important investment decisions that we all make. Stay with us.